Straight ahead on CCX News, knowing the law with lawn signs. How election season keeps local code enforcers extra busy. Plus, grocery wars lead to new additions. How Cub Foods is trying to bring in more customers in Crystal. And later, the force awakens in Maple Grove. CCX News starts right now. Hello and thanks for joining us. We are 17 days away from the election and many folks are promoting their favorite politician with campaign lawn signs. Reporter Sonny Goen shows us why city code enforcers are particularly busy this time of year. Halloween decorations aren't the only thing you'll find in people's front yards this time of year. Everywhere you look, you can see political endorsements. I don't pay too much attention to them. <laughs> Basically, I just know what I'm going to be voting for. Many cities have ordinances when it comes to non-commercial signs. However, during election season, state law supersedes municipal regulations. Now, there are an awful lot of places where you can place campaign signs, but there are limits. Technically, they're not supposed to be along the boulevard. The most important thing to remember is that campaign signs have to be on private property. And if you want to place a sign in someone else's yard, you have to get permission. And that's where really we get most of the, the calls and concerns. Are the, are the signs in the right locations or not? Are the ones that are put close to private, private property, but maybe straddling the line? Our code enforcement officer is doing a lot more running around because of the time of the year, absolutely. Safety is also a concern when installing campaign signs. Make sure that the signs aren't blocking uh, visibility for people trying to make corners, uh, driving down the street, things like that. No matter the political affiliation, most folks we talk with say it's awesome that folks want to exercise their First Amendment right. It's important to uh, for the candidate to make sure they get their name out, and it's a nice reminder for those of us that support a particular candidate. The more the merrier. I think that get the word out and what people believe and what they're doing, and and uh, information is great. I love it. In Plymouth, Asanya Goins, CCX News. If campaign signs are on public property, cities will either remove them or they'll call the campaigns and order them to take it off public property. While Hy-Vee continues to expand its footprint in the Twin Cities, Cub Food stores continue to innovate. We remodeled this store and Grand reopened it just a couple months ago, but now we're coming back in and adding a full wine and spirit shop. Construction began a couple months ago on the new liquor store at the Crystal Cub Foods. When work is finished next month, it will be one of more than 20 Cub Foods locations in the Twin Cities with a wine and spirits store. Nearby Chalet Liquors closed about a year ago and Cub Foods officials say that store's closure provided them an opportunity to fill a void in the area. Occasionally we have opportunities where a liquor store may exit the area and we have the opportunity to add that to our portfolio. We're always interested in doing that because the customer truly votes. The customer is the one that tells us whether they would like to have a product or not. And so the customer is the one that's really in charge of what we carry in our stores and we're excited to have this new offering. An official grand opening celebration for the new liquor store will take place on November 15th. In Plymouth, plans are in the works for new senior housing in the southeast part of the city. The plans would affect a church. Plymouth Lutheran Church is seeking to build a new church. The existing church was built in 1937 and the building needs extensive repairs. If a new church gets built, a developer would take over the old church site with plans to build a four-story co-op style senior living building. The project would involve a park land swap with the city, which Plymouth officials believe would be beneficial to the city's trail system. The plans are in the very early stages and still need city approval. Meanwhile, demolition of the old Her uh, Herzing University building could happen soon. The Crystal City Council this week approved plans for a storage facility at the site. The Herzing building has been there for almost 50 years. While most council members are excited to see the building demolished, one council member voted against the project. Julie Deschler, who represents that area, had hoped for something different, such as a restaurant or ice cream shop. The Animal Humane Society is lowering adoption fees following the arrival of a large number of dogs rescued from Hurricane Michael down south. The Golden Valley Shelter took in 88 dogs from Alabama, where high winds and waters crushed homes, leaving hundreds of animals homeless. All of these animals were already available for adoption down south, so they are no one's lost pet. 
The Animal Humane Society is lowering fees for larger dogs with the hope that they could be adopted sooner so the shelter could possibly make a second hurricane rescue run. The discount will average about $50, but it depends on the animal. Still ahead, more reason why great minds don't always think alike. It's the focus of a new theater performance next week in Weekend Showcase. Plus, the Benilde St. Margaret's girls soccer team shoots for another trip to the state tournament. But first, Sunday looks like the nicer day of the weekend. Saturday, we may not reach 40 degrees. Here's something to think about. Imagine you could see, but letters, words, and numbers didn't make sense. Or you had to read the same passage over and over again. Dyslexia is the subject of the latest presentation at Stages Theater. Neil Pursley makes sense of it all in today's weekend showcase. Let's take our seat. Like the play says, they say it's kind of like the letters on the page you know, move or kind of, you might see pieces of the letters. Stages Theater's production called Fish in a Tree deals with deal dyslexia with. and you also and the broader concepts together. of acceptance and encouragement. I'm it's a side. play about Allie, who I play, I a girl with dyslexia. And so she's kind of always hid the fact that she has dyslexia, and covered it up by getting in trouble. And so she has a new teacher named Mr. Daniels, and he kind of sees that there's maybe something that isn't quite right or the pieces don't add up, and he thinks that she has dyslexia. Fish in a Tree is based on the children's book of the same name and drives home the idea that everybody is smart in different ways. But if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it'll live its life believing that it's stupid. The whole show focuses in on Allie's brain, what's going on in her mind, like all the mind movies. Um, really show what she's thinking, so the whole this whole show is focused in on her. Sixth grader Allie's surreal, fantastical moments come without notice, but are easily identifiable and give a nice artistic impression of what's going on in Allie's head. The show is an hour and a half long and is good for kids seven and up who can sit still for that long. It's just about her overcoming like stuff at school, stuff at home, and then also on top of this, this dyslexia thing. And I think it's a really cool show because it shows kids and parents alike that, you know, it's okay to be different. The production highlights that everyone is more than a label and that great minds don't always think alike. For Weekend Showcase from Stages Theater in Hopkins, Neil Persley, CCX News. Fish in a Tree is on stage now through October 28th at Stages Theater Company in Hopkins. Still ahead, the kind of martial arts experience any Star Wars fan would enjoy. But first, it's a physical battle as defending state champion Tatino Grace meets Blake in a boys' soccer section final. John Jacobson is in next. The Benilde St. Margaret's and Blake girls soccer teams played at the end of August with Benilde winning one to nothing. Their second meeting had much more at stake as they battled for a spot in the state Class A tournament. The Red Knights and Bears meeting at Osseo in the Section 5 final. First half, Blake's KK Hogg, perfect pass. Matty Ticks rips it into the top corner for a goal and it's one to nothing Bears. Early second half, Benilde's Elizabeth Dietzen, nice ball for Amanda Casty. And she finishes with a left foot to make it 1-1. A short time later, Cassidy rips another nice shot. The Blake goalkeeper gets a hand on it, but can't keep it from crossing the goal line. And the Red Knights go on to win 2-1, making the state tournament for the third time in four years. It's amazing. Like, it's all I want to end my, like, senior year. Like, last year, we lost to De La Salle in the semifinal, and it was really, like, sad and unfortunate. And this year, our, like, motto is comeback season. So um, I'm really glad. Like, we're going to go hard in state, and we're so happy. The Section 5A boys tournament was loaded with great teams, including the defending state Class A champions, Tutino Grace. The Eagles were the top seed in the section and played number three seed, Blake. In the section final, the Bears had eliminated second seeded Breck in the semis. Nice through ball by the Bears, Jake Jackson Lagos to Jake Shapiro, and his shot is in, and Blake takes a one to nothing lead 13 minutes into the match. Late in the first half, the Eagles tie it. Jacob Wasik turns and fires a shot into the Bears' net. Look at it again, the senior gets the Eagles on the board, and it is 1 1 at halftime. 
Under 12 minutes of play in the second half, and Blake's number five, Howard Henderson, takes out Dutino Grace's Eric Krieger on the tackle. Henderson has issued a red card, and the Bears have to play a man down the rest of the way. About two minutes later, the Eagles almost make them pay. Herbert Endley gets free, but hits the side of the net with a shot, and it stays 1-1. Under two minutes to go, and off the throw-in. Blake's number 10, Jake Lundberg, heads the ball off the goalie's hands, the crossbar and in. And that's the winning goal as Blake stuns number one to Tino Grace 2-1. to one. The Bears win their second section title in the past three seasons. The regular season wrapped up Wednesday for football teams in the area. The playoffs get started Tuesday for some local squads. The schools in the largest class don't kick off until next Friday. Here's a look at the Class 6A games involving teams from the northwest suburbs. Wysetta, the number four seed from Section 6, hosts Centennial. Maple Grove is the fourth seed in Section 5. They get a home game against White Bear Lake. Champlain Park is the number two seed in Section 5. The 6-2 and two Rebels host Shakopee in the first round. Armstrong is the sixth seed in Section 6. They'll be on the road to face Eastview. Hopkins does not get an easy draw. They travel to Lakeville to meet top-ranked Lakeville North. Tutino Grace also faces an unbeaten team as they go to Blaine. In Class 5A, despite a loss in the last regular season game, Cooper is the top seed in Section 5. The Hawks are followed by Spring Lake Park and Irondale. Park Center is sixth. The Pirates are at Irondale in the quarterfinals Tuesday. Cooper has a bye in the next Saturday semifinals. In Section 6-5A, winless Osseo is the number six seed. Elk River is the top seed. Osseo faces St. Cloud Tech in the quarterfinals Tuesday at St. Cloud State. In Section 5-4A, Providence Academy is the number two seed behind the SMB co-op. Holy Angels suffered its first loss Wednesday. They are the third seed. Benilda's five and three, but that's only good for a sixth seed in this loaded section. Providence opens the playoffs at home against Richfield Tuesday while Benilde is at Holy Angels. Brooklyn Center is seated fifth in Section 5-3A. They'll face Malacca in the quarterfinals Tuesday. Breck, the top seed in Section 4-3A. The Mustangs have a buy into the semifinals next Saturday. And that's all for sports. Delane, back to you. All right, thank you, John. We continue to feature the candidates running for Maple Grove City Council in Local Vote 2018. Today, we hear from Karina Jayasuria and incumbent Phil Leith. Hi, my name is Karina Jayasuria. The most important responsibilities of council member is to participate in council meetings and the community. As a proud resident and community member of Maple Grove, I want to participate in my local government, including council meetings and serving the community and residents and local businesses. As a council member, I will be concerned not only with the conduct of daily affairs, but also with the future development of the city of Maple Grove. I take seriously the directing and enforcement of city ordinances, managing city financial operations, conducting city intergovernmental affairs, and most importantly for me, protecting the welfare of the city and its residents. I plan to provide community leadership for Maple Grove and look forward to serving my community. Thank you. Hi, my name is Phil Leith and I'm running for the Maple Grove City Council. It has been an honor serving the residents of Maple Grove the past 12 years in that role. In the coming years, my experience will be very important as we must keep a tight rein on the budget while we continue to grow but still maintain the high level of service our residents expect. We must make wise development choices for the remaining undeveloped lands and the redevelopment projects with a focus on growing the business and commercial sector. We must maintain the quality of our parks, trails, and youth athletic opportunities, and it is time to explore the needs of our community center to address issues such as the demand for ice time, expanding our senior center and programs, and increased parking. My name is Phil Leith, and I ask for your vote on November 6th. Up next, The Force Awakens in Maple Grove, the experience that Star Wars fans can't get enough of when we come back. Are you a big Star Wars fan? How about the idea of fighting like Obi-Wan or Count Dooku? Well, there's a local martial arts organization that might be right up your alley. Here's Shannon Slatton. Sunday night at USA Karate in Maple Grove, 
you'll find no ordinary group of martial artists. This is a great way to blow off steam, to just have some fun. This is every Star Wars fan's fantasy. It's just so much fun. The Saber Legion started a few years ago, right here in Minnesota, but it's since spread throughout the galaxy or, let's say, world. They're having one in Australia, Tokyo, uh, the UK has a page, and it's just, it's been, it's just been growing and growing and growing. Turns out Star Wars and martial arts go together like two peas in a pod racer. And the Saber Legion is filled with folks who grew up watching Luke and Anakin battle on the big screen and wanting a taste of the action themselves. This is a way that I think we can tap into that younger kid and then actually just get to, you know, wail on each other, you know, you know, and spend some money on stuff that we some really fancy flashlights. Those fancy flashlights, they avoid calling them lightsabers for legal reasons, started around 80 bucks, and they're fully combat ready. The blade is made out of polycarbonate, the same stuff they make out of riot gear. They're wielded by people of all skill levels. You don't need martial arts training to join, and that was good news to Tony Lucian, who drives 45 minutes from East Bethel just to be here. I showed up with no no experience really other than pretending in my backyard as a kid. But since starting here three years ago, he's learned a lot from people who are martial artists, like Ryan Kappas, who's been practicing the Japanese sword discipline kendo for nine years. I like to, you know, play against other people, different backgrounds, and that's really the fun of it. Different backgrounds and skills all coming together for a martial arts experience from a galaxy not so far away. It's a, an addiction in a good way. It's one of those things once you realize that you can marry something that you've loved since you were a little kid, and then you can also work out while loving that really geeky thing, it's really cool. Well, if the Saber Legion sounds like your cup of Yarba tea, you can sign up at saberlegion.org. Well, that is all the news for now. Thanks for joining us. In the spirit of Halloween, we leave you with a trip to Spooky Lane in Brooklyn Park. Enjoy.